Yo, what's up everybody? It's Monday, September 26th, as you can tell. I'm not in my usual location. Um, I had a little emergency to attend to. Another bad day. Overnight, the British pound crashed to the lowest level in history against the dollar. You probably heard about that. Um, and it was it was fast and it was violent but by the morning it had recovered pretty much that entire drop but started to head back down during the day there was news that came out today two things I want to talk about number one is just this uh, kind of UK macro situation the announcement of the stimulus and the tax cuts and the spending and you know that that's bullish i mean in any other environment if we had an announcement like that uk us major fiscal stimulus tax cuts biggest tax cuts in 50 years i mean in any other environment You'd see a big rally off of something like that, and you'd see the currency pop higher. But right now we're dealing with this hyper elevated level of fear about interest rates and anything that anything that points to higher economic growth, whether it's real in the numbers. You know, we saw this with the in the U.S. with the August uh, payrolls. Anything that points to higher economic growth, you got that reaction again. The monetarist zombies who are deathly afraid, and I've used the terminology death, the terminal, uh, deathly afraid of interest rates, and so they're going to sell. But today, what was, and, and I think I mentioned even on Friday, I don't know if it was Friday, but I think I may have mentioned that I bought a small position in the British pound on the day that fiscal package was announced. That was Friday. And, it, you know, that was a steep, steep drop in the pound. And I, you know, I bought lightly, a little scale down buying. But last night when I saw that drop, like I was, I was shaking. I, mean, I was shaken by the the rapidity and the magnitude of that drop. Like it was really, really incredible. But what bothered me the most today was a statement from the Bank of England saying they're going to raise rates as much as possible to protect the pound. Now, here again, we see, I mean, it's incredible. We just see this failure of a belief system, this failure of a policy known as monetarism. Once again, nothing has been learned. I mean, what has been the lesson from countries like Turkey, from countries like Argentina? with rate hikes as a means to defend the currency. In all of those situations, they have been negative. They've led to further and rapid depreciation in the currency. And as soon as I saw that, I knew that the British pound is doomed. It is doomed. You know, Larry Summers came out on Friday and said that he thought the pound was going to go to parity against the dollar. And I kind of laughed at that. But you know what? He's going to be right. If that's the policy that the Bank of England embraces to quote unquote protect the pound, all they're going to be doing is sending the pound lower and lower and lower, just like the Turkish Central Bank did with the lira, just like the Argentinian Central Bank did with the peso. I mean, it's just like we keep seeing this repeat behavior over and over again. Same policies applied, same disastrous results every single time. 
It's a sickness, folks. I'm telling you, it's a sickness. Let me uh, segue now to what's going on in the U.S. Uh, uh, disappointment again, and I'm not talking necessarily about the market, but Friday. Remember, I told you we had we had two days, Wednesday and Thursday, where we started to see some replenishment of the tax train. We had 15 billion in positive fiscal flows on uh, Wednesday and Thursday combined. So it took down the um, 146 net drain of September. It took it down to like 131 billion. Well, guess what? On Friday, we got a 15 billion drain. So we're right back up again at 146 billion drain for September. I mean, I do not see any possibility of, a, of a, even a meager bounce in this market until at least Friday. Why am I saying Friday? Because Friday we're gonna get the first of the month payments. Those are the first of the month for October. Normally we do get it on the first of the month, but October 1st is Saturday. So if, the, if those dates fall on a weekend, they do it the day before. So Friday, we'll get like a 64, 65 billion positive flow. That should stem the bleeding, but man, man, oh man. Who knows what it's going to look like going into Friday? I mean, we still have we got we still got to see the number from today, you know, the next four days, and there's been no let up in this fiscal drain for the month. Again, when we came into this month, and I was telling you guys this all the way back in June, yeah, prepare for a rocky mid September because of the quarterly corporate tax payment. I said it's going to be like 110, 120 billion. Uh, then we'll start, you know, getting that filled back in. But we went to 146, almost 147 billion. We got a little tiny positive flow on Wednesday and Thursday of last week. And now, boom, they hit it again with another 15 billion drain. We're down again, 146, 147 billion drain for the month. I mean, you can't have a market rally under those conditions. Especially given the, the psychology of the market right now, like this in the grips of this, this terminal fear about interest rates. I mean, you just, there's no way. Even you get good economic news, it's used as a negative right now because everybody's so deathly afraid of interest rates. I mean, we need some serious positive fiscal flows uh, just to, you know, bring some buying power back into the market. So yeah, we're not going to get anything, uh, you know, practically nothing anyway until Friday. Sometimes we could even see the bounce happen a day later. So that would be Monday of next week. But hey, look, I told you it was going to be around October 6th. But even now, I don't think October 6th is going to be a date when we can count on the full drain as having been replaced. We're lucky if by October 6th if we get half that drain being replaced at the rate we're going. I wish they were doing the same thing here like they're planning on doing in the UK with tax cuts and, and increasing uh, spending to get the economy going. That's what's needed. You can't be afraid of economic output because economic output equates to growth. It, create, it, it equates to more supply of goods and services. That would actually help in, uh, you know, calming some of these inflationary pressures. But I tell you what's not going to help. What's not going to help is central banks continuously raising interest rates because that's just raising prices. That's keeping inflation elevated more than it would be if they were not doing such stupidity. It's a nice day. Anyway, that's it for today. Just a short video, but I thought I'd uh, update you guys on what's going on. See you tomorrow. Bye.